How's it going everyone? Fargast here. Today is going to be a pretty different video from usual, but it's nothing that's really about story or characters or any analysis really. I just felt like going on Metacritic and then looking at the user score and then seeing like everyone's bad review of it. Cause I just want to, I just, I'm, I'm feeling like some good takes are in order here. I want to hear some hot Fire Emblem takes. So Metacritic has a 89 review and then a user score of 8.7, but there's like a hundred and like 30 or 125 like zero as like like super super low scores so i thought it'd be really funny to actually see um what people think of the game if they hate it <laughs> so i thought it'd be funny um as you'll see here we'll get this going we'll go to the desktop and then here we go so uh as you can see we have this and then i have on this tab the worst of the worst Three houses, zero out of 10, one out of 10, zero. So uh, let's get to reading and see what these takes are. I'm really excited because I really like Three Houses. It's one of my favorite Fire Emblem games ever. I love doing videos on it. Um, really excited for the DLC. And I would give it like a near perfect score. Um, but there are some flaws that I recognize with it. But these are like mega takes and I'm super stoked. Okay, so we're just gonna start watching. And guys, if you don't know who I am, I'm a fart guest to make Fire Emblem videos about everything, let's plays, scripted videos, news stuff. So if you're interested in sticking around with this channel, um, you're gonna expect some Fire Emblem stuff. And if that's what you're into, and if you're new, go ahead and subscribe. All right, folks, let's get into it. Okay, so Germanium, German Numer says, graphics and animations have progressed from those FEs on the 3DS, but level design system and UI became worse. One out of 10. I don't like that art style is so influenced in the current and modern anime. I miss when Fire Emblems had unique art style and I don't see sense in the cinematics at 15 frames per second with the intention of looking like a generic CGI of cheap anime. That without counting the strong tendency of the last Fire Emblems to put a dating simulator, I expected that with this game, such a trend will change, but it is more of the same that I don't like. Hold on, what? Okay. Sword Shield Best Gen. Uh, I don't see the sense in the cinematics. Okay, that's funny. That without counting on the tendency of the last Fire Emblems to put a dating simulator, I expected that this game... It is... It did... It kind of changed. Well, I mean, it's not as, like, tacky as Fates, but I, I'd say it's a little bit more well-constructed for, like, a dating sim. At least there's no... At least there's no Gen 2? Well, I mean, there is a Gen 2. At least it was like, no, there is a time skip. There's no kids, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, it's so influenced by current and modern anime. It's like, FE4 and 5 were like super anime. There was an, there was an anime of like FE1. <laughs> I don't know. It just, it's generally like they're kind of, they're sort of influenced by the current trends and like genealogy is like super popular, but yeah, that was super, that was super anime. Uh, Alex Harper says, it's not the best that the saga has given us. The people are exaggerating. It really drags the same mistakes that the franchise has since 3DS. Games, the Tellia saga, I liked more than this. There's nothing to expand. Uh, apparently this one is just the same mistakes since 3DS. They're pretty different games. You'll, I wish he elaborated on that one. Uh, I only played a few hours and I have said that it has been a disappointing experience. I was sparing a better I was I was sparing a better graphic performance for a for a Switch game, but this seems like a PS2 game, and the story it seems pretty boring. It doesn't hook me. Zero out of ten. Uh, it does definitely look like a oh my god. The graphics are like no that yeah they're pretty bad. The, they're like really bad. Um, I will concede that the graphics for Three Houses is like whew. like once you saw it out the gate. Oh boy. Yikes, bro. That's not good. Okay, next up. Um, it's not possible that a Switch game can have these graphics. It's a shame that there are games like Super Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild and Fire Emblem has not made the leap, has not made the leap they gave. I feel it's a 3DS game in HD. What? No 3DS game looks like a Switch game. What? It's an outdated game with a previous generation in the technical aspect. Besides the story is generic, boring, and with poor writing, if the game doesn't enter, if the game doesn't enter for my eyes, less it enters me through its narrative. It's awful. If the game doesn't enter for my eyes, then less it enters 
through its narrative, it's Afwol. <laughs> okay. Uh... It's ridiculous how they overvalue this game. It's really not that good. The story is not the best in the saga. Why is everyone calling it a saga? Didn't someone else say saga? Why is everyone calling it a... The saga, like what? Fire Emblem Saga? That's not what a saga is, right? A saga is like in a, hold on. <laughs> What's a saga? A story is a, a saga is a long story account or sequence of events. It's a long story composed in medieval times. Like what sagas are these? <laughs> Where is this? This saga, okay, hold on. Uh, it's not the best that the saga has given us. It's a series, but okay. Um, people are exaggerating. It really drags the same mistakes that the franchise has since 3DS. Did I read this one already? Yeah, I did. We're at this one. The story is not the best in the saga. The art style is poor and generic. I wouldn't say it's generic. I think it's pretty unique. Uh, for Fire Emblem, it's like, the, it's really unique. And the gameplay is somewhat broken. I will concede, the gameplay can get real broken really fast, but that's kind of like par for the course for Fire Emblem. Sothis Feet, and you didn't, you gave this a zero? Man. <laughs> the anime aesthetic, the cliche, the cliche characters, okay. The typical husbandos and waifus. The same pairing and friendship system that we have complained about so much since the saga changed radically. Why? Why is everyone calling this a saga? Uh, since the saga changed radically in Awakening, this game is the peak of the degradation of the franchise. And a, I love this. And a clear proof that the saga never returned to its basic and original essence. Like, it's a good, oh, I, I, I love this criticism. It's a good game, but a bad fire emblem. And, and as a, and as Fire Emblem, I will judge it. <laughs> hold on, hold on. We've got so much since rad changed radically in Awakening. Is it, is it? I don't like, like, it's a good game, but a bad Fire Emblem game. Like, what does that mean? Like, what, if, if it's a, how? Then, like, what, what is this criticism? It's a bad Fire Emblem game? Like, whose standards are you using? I love that criticism a lot. I sound like such a hardcore defender here, but like some of these are just epic takes that I'm really into. This is not a real Fire Emblem. It is some Harry Potter style school nonsense. Bring back the path of Radiance era Fire Emblem. Okay. <laughs> Bring back those clunky animations. Bring back Har. Who's even really good in Path of Radiance? What's the tier list even look like? Yeah, I don't know. Bring back Ike and his four iron swords. He comes with in the inventory. This game is way too freaking easy. Jesus Christ. I returned it after about 20 hours with the intention of rebuying it when they finally got around to adding Lunatic slash Inferno difficulty. Hard mode has literally never felt easier in a Fire Emblem game before. This is like babies versus Fire Emblem in all honesty. A bit of a nitpick, but the graphics and art style really seem to be really leave a lot to be desired. The game looks even more lackluster than Pokemon Sword and Shield. Well, at least with three houses, it's plenty of content to keep the player busy on like Pokemon credit where it's due. Four out of 10. Oh, this is a solid review. Okay, the first half of the game is almost as good, is, al is almost good though easy as hell, even on hard difficulty, but the second half, let's split it into sections. The balance, before the time skip, you don't even need to think to go through most of the missions, after the spoiler, there is a huge difficulty spike. And I'm not a dummy who can't do good trades or use game mechanics. Instead, creating difficult layouts or introducing new game mechanics to make fights harder, developers choose to make corridor maps with infinite enemy spawns? I literally had a situation where after 25 minutes of clearing mobs, I had more enemies on the map than the start of the mission. What chapter are you playing? <laughs> Infinite spawns? There's like, no, where? Okay, the story. Again, for the first half is fine, I agree. Uh, there is not a lot going on, but it's basically introduction to the world. The second half is the problem. I went eagle route. Yeah, that's, yeah, I can't really defend that one. There's 18 chapters in that fire call correctly. Imagine the game where right after a huge plot point progression stops for six, six to eight hours in the last third of the game. That is Fire Emblem Three Houses. Four to five chapters at the start of the second half provide no story whatsoever. 
and don't even try to argue you just didn't complete those side activities. The main story should never be hidden under various side activities. There are a lot of gamers who play story-based games for the main story. Yeah. <laughs> the Black Eagles people in the comments are like, holy shit, here we go. <laughs> Another Angel Guard hater. Characters. This is one, this one is controversial, but I just didn't like them. They felt generic and almost all of them lack in character development, but I get why some people like them. I just don't get this criticism. Like, they felt pretty fleshed out to me. <laughs> UI. Some texts are unreadable and portable. Yeah, you know what? I will agree. I really am not a fan of the UI. I think the coolest thing about it is like the circle wheel thing at the at the prep screen, but like, I, I don't know. I feel like there's definitely some UI changes I would I would like to make. Um, I can't rattle off the top of my head, but yeah, I would I would I think the best UI is like Fates, but Fates had like a lot less going on than Three Houses. I don't know how you would improve the UI, but if someone would make like a video on like how they would want to improve the UI, I think that'd be really cool. Performance. There are some awful looking textures, awful backgrounds and frame drops, but it's not that big of a deal. The game is playable, so it looks fine. Can't rate it higher. I wanted this game to be good, but so far it's not even average IMO. Oof. Well, sorry, buddy. DCMC Boxers. If you are someone who came on board with this franchise during the 3DS era and stayed there, then this game may very well come off as a masterpiece. Like, remember when I said casual versus elitist isn't really a thing? Uh, it might be for this guy. <laughs> there are improvements to the overall quality of the story and characters, as well as return from some classic gameplay elements that make maps a bit more interesting than other recent titles. However, if you look at this game in comparison to the previous console fire emblems, the games which the developers claim to take great inspiration from, you'll be met with disappointment. While Three Houses is an improvement of elements from the 3DS era, it's only that. It hasn't taken a necessary departure from the elements in those games which actively compromise narrative quality and coherency. Byleth is perhaps the worst <laughs> series' worst iteration of a completely unnecessary addition, the Avatar. The need for a player to insert the need for a player insert to be the center focus for of the plot and several characters arcs compromises much of the story's integrity and likely greatly con contributed to the framing of one route in particular. The avatar being able to support with everyone for the sake of romance was already a drain on the overall support writing quality, but now characters simply talk to the silent brick wall as they rattle off interesting bits of their backstories or suddenly surpass their issues. These explorations are rarely saved for supports, between actual characters where their individual quirks or past histories would make a more interesting conversation. Uh, but even outside Violet's supports continue to be- Why is- Am I the only one who really likes these supports? With ca While characters have moved on from having one quirk to solely portray their character, you can now generally expect two or three quirks, with one in particular being singled out for any group dialogue that happens between house members. Some conversations do manage to be at least humorous or entertaining, rarely do anything to meaningfully expand on the depth of a particular character, explore their backstory, add to the world of Foldland, or be tonally appropriate to the game's second act. Okay, that I can, yeah. I mean, there's definitely like that weird gap between like a B and A support where like five years pass and they're still like on the same topic. That's just kind of like the, con the concession I feel like is okay to make, but I don't know. I, I really like the support conversations in this game. Uh, add to the world of Foldland, like, what? <laughs> Cyril is like very much adding to the world of Foldland. Some some things I agree with here. Others are like, okay, I, I just, I don't know. Like I, I I don't really think the quality of supports really have like gone lower. I find they're pretty up. I, I find they're pretty good. Like I, I, I would like to see someone like say, or like, I mean, it's all opinion based obviously. And like, honestly, like I don't really give a shit at the end of the day, but like, um, I liked when people say like the supports got worse, I'd really be curious to see like compared to what, you know, like compared to fates, compared to awakening, compared to like, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's compared to what dog. Un point, un point juste pour le fait que les histoires diffèrent entre la personne choisie car tout le reste est chiant. So one point, I haven't translated French in super long, but I think this person is saying, one point just for the fact that their history differs between the lords since all the since the rest of it's shit, I think is what he's saying. Um, this game is a joke. I play Fire Emblem Saga, again, like with the Saga stuff, 
Do people say like Final Fantasy Saga or like the Pokemon Saga? Maybe they do. I don't know. I've never heard that. I don't think that's... Wouldn't you just say series? Who isn't even the worst one that has been released in Europe and many things need to be reworked. First, a lot of inconsistency are present in the storytelling. So much I've lost count before the 10th chapter. Secondly, when you try to introduce a new game mechanic, be sure it has a purpose because putting a rewind time just broke the game. If you want to play permadeath, it's useless. And if you don't want to use permadeath, it has no purpose whatsoever. After that plot twist is no dot dot dot, no comment dot dot dot, you can clearly see who's going to stab you in the back and who you can clearly see some resemblances with their favorite characters and their plot twists. Then you are obliged to wait to get deeper in a certain relationship, obliged to wait for the story, for the history to move on. You can be in an S relationship before the second half of the game, dot, dot, dot. After that, we could talk about bad frame rate, bad graphism. The UI, who sucks balls, <laughs> is a person who, having more than four times the same ma map to battle on, waifus and husbandos spitting the same line of dialogue over and over until you begin to hate your own waifu and so on. Finally, to all those who gave it a 10 game like this, I just want to say one thing. You're destroying the video game industry by having no freaking opinion. Where are the... Where are the... <laughs> Hold on, what? You're destroying the video game industry by having no freaking opinion. Where are the explication for your 10 out of 10? Finish the game totally, then do your review. Be a little more critical and the world will be a better place where people will work harder and harder for a better result. <laughs> oh man, that's a good one. Uh, this game fixes some of the problems with the split story in Fire Emblem Fates, but still suffers from some of the same problems, even though the story splits later on. Do you have a case uh, in which three of the four paths just feel like they didn't bother to resolve their, all their problems while one of them does? Yeah. Um, spoiler alert. I'm not going to spoil anything, but yeah, Azure Moon kind of like ends with like a big question mark on like a big deal. And yeah, that's just kind of like, you kind of have to just deal with it. <laughs> you kind of just have to deal with it. Gameplay wise, it's a return to the older days and is more like classic Fire Emblem Eric games uh, than Awakening. If you were a fan of Awakening and Birthright, this is not the game for you. If you liked Conquest and Pre-Awakening Eric games, then Three Houses is for you. Didn't someone say the exact opposite up like... Yeah, someone said the exact opposite up upstairs there. <laughs> um... The other part is the traditional turn-based systems, but like with Conquest and Pre-Awakening games, you're pushed along the story with what is essentially an action limit, like, okay, so the professor level, so you are not free to take your time. I mean, you can still take your time. The result is that even though it feels like there's a lot to do, your ability to actually do things are capped by an artificial time limit. How is it artificial? It's, it's the month. <laughs> As someone who is a bigger fan of the Awakening era games, this is disappointing considering that they even said that they would use Fates as the metric for determining the future of the series. The series is gradually falling back to the old ways and needs course correction. Oh damn, so this guy wants to like keep it with Awakening. Okay, all right. You gave it a four. Totally predictable and disappointing. Do not touch even with a stick. Get away from this game. Do not be fooled. Worst video game of this year for my taste. Nice. <laughs> um, if this was a... Pr oh, yeah. Here we go. If this was a proper FE game, it could actually be great. But the endless monastery free exploration and anime relationship activities just drag the game down significantly. Especially since all it does is complicate actions that older FE games let you do with two clicks. Allocating extra skill points, for example, could be done between missions and other entries. Skill points for ex skill points? Allocating skill points? You mean like grinding? Between missions and other in other entries. Now you have to run around for half an hour <laughs> grabbing grabbing gifts for one student, bring them to others, then get vegetables as a reward, which you use at the dinner activity to bring their motivation up. So you can use their motivation to lecture them personally and raise their skill points. It's just useless. Oh, so like before you could grind, like a weapon skill. Okay. I think that's what, yeah. Okay. Weapon skill is what he's saying. Allo collecting skill points. What? Okay. Now it's just useless. And combat is the easiest it's ever been. There are so many crutches that you literally cannot do wrong. Not only can you turn back time, 
but also the game shows you exactly where and who enemies will target, meaning that you literally cannot make a wrong move. There's no strategy involved and combat just revolves around exploiting this. That's like a quality of life thing. Why would you play a Fire Emblem game that doesn't have that shit? <laughs> Not the time skip, but like the who enemies will target, like that's really helpful. I guess if you're looking for like the classic experience and like, can't you turn that shit off? I don't even know. Maybe you can turn it off. I don't actually remember if you can or not, but I really like that quality of life change. Um, yeah, if it would, yeah, if it was a proper Fire Emblem game, if you took out the whole monastery, which you can skip by the way, then it would be a proper Fire Emblem game. <laughs> yeah, it's just like he's really mad about uh, the monastery school thing, but like, I wonder how far you can get by just literally skipping that entire portion. Might be a good challenge. Just like play Fire Emblem Three Houses in a very classic way. Start strong, but falls flat. The gameplay become too repetitive and boring. Story is nice, but storytelling isn't very good. The art direction is also worse than previous versions. Uh, I applaud designers intention to be creative and want to add more mechanics to the game, but for people who are not into ACG slash life sim games, or who just don't get those anime manga culture. The academic life sim part of the game is a waste of time. You can skip most of these, but you lose a lot of benefit and reward. So the sim, so the life sim part is not really optional if you want to maximize your resources. Maximize your resources. The graphics, modeling, and animation is somehow much worse than Fire Emblem Warriors, which is a lot more characters on screen. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's kind of not as good. <laughs> um, I like this part. I like this part a lot. Where is it? Uh, or just don't get those anime slash manga culture. Yeah, if we don't, if you don't get anime slash manga, you don't get it. <laughs> Me being like, what's a JoJo reference in like the first video or like my the literal last video I said. Uh, let's go. Let's get like a really like hot take here. Let's do this last one, Narlson. Let me preface by saying, I have been playing Fire Emblem since Path of Radiance, been playing RPG since the NES. I have never reviewed a video game before and created accounts specifically for this. Love the Fire Emblem series, or should I say I used to? Below is my breakdown of the game. Pros, nice graphics. Whoa, <laughs> okay. This guy's coming up with a hot take. Uh, character progression ends on some truly odd master classes, sword and magic, reason based attack classes. These demand you to be poor at multiple skills instead of good or great at any one. Kinda. <laughs> Summary, the main storyline has some fun aspects and battle is neat, albeit easy, but know that you are buying more anime dating, more of an, <laughs> more of an anime dating game rather than a legitimate gritty difficult entry into what was an amazing series. What was an amazing series? My suggestion, don't waste your money. Okay, this is gonna be the last one, Crash Man. FPS drops in strategy maps as well as exploration. Do I not experience, like, is anyone else getting FPS drops? Like, I very rarely get them. Exploration is completely unnecessary and puts the focus away from strategy maps. Ton of fetch quests just so you can have extra skill points to characters. Okay, I will agree that, like, the fetch quests for, like, the mandatory uh, quests are, like, kind of annoying. Um, strategy maps are completely easy without any challenge. The, again, this is only hard mode existed in the day here. <laughs> so this is, like, pre-maddening. Um, you can turn back time as well as always know which character gets attacked before enemies turn, removing the strategy aspect. I, I disagree with that. Okay, it's still a strategy game. It's still a strategy game, right? Typical anime trope school setting. Fair. Music is quite bad. Mega bad take. Come on, Crash. You can't say the music is quite bad, dog. Story in the last third makes no sense. <laughs> I feel like a lot of these people just play like one route and we're like, fuck it, this game is garbage. Last third makes no sense. See, I wish people would like emphasize but well, that's what you get for user reviews. Oh man, this is a zero, okay. This game is my biggest disappointment, possibly one of the biggest disappointments I have ever had from a video game. It makes very little sense and just feels half-baked. However, the story is dreadful. Honestly, this is the one of a dud for me and I'm surprised. <laughs> okay guys, well, I'm gonna do it here. Man, I love reading these. These are fucking epic. Okay, if you guys liked uh, watching these, uh, reading these reviews with me, um, let me know in the comments down below. See if you want to see more of them. Um, just to, like, just everyone's entitled to their opinion. 
I honestly, I'm just doing this for the entertainment of it. I really don't give a shit about who, if these guys experience three houses in a different way than I do. I love the game and that's all that matters to me. And if you don't like the game, then that matters to you. That's it. That's literally all there is to it. Uh, but some of these are fucking hot takes that I just love reading. Um, so guys, hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave a like and comment and subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one. Deuces.